Some of you might ask, now where did he come up with all these names? Probably nobody in here knows any of these names. Maybe a couple, somebody might know one of them. All right, but I found these next in this book. Marylanders in the Confederacy. Nobody knows probably the exact number of how many Marylanders actually fought in the Civil War. I've seen numbers anywhere from 10,000 to 20,000 because the records were so poor that, for example, some of these Davidsonville boys might have just went over to the Potomac and signed up with a cavalry unit in Virginia. And, you know, nobody really kept record of it. All right, so there's a lot of probably misnames along the way. This book probably has 8,000 names in it. And here's an example of that. Okay, there's our buddy, Daniel Kemp. All right, you can see he went in the Virginia Cavalry. So he took off and went south and joined up with Virginia Cavalry. And here's his brother, you know, from Davidsonville, so no doubt, you know, that's where he came from. And all those boys that I have on that list all had, I either got them, they either said Davidsonville, or I found them on that enrollment list that I showed you earlier, because I went through all the uh, district one enrollment list. Okay, uh, let's go to the next. Okay, so let's talk about some of these guys. I don't know a lot about any of them, but there are a few things I'll mention. Okay, we know about the Kents. You know, we have enough information. We know where they live. They went to California after murder. Um, one person who was pretty informative said that he heard that Daniel Kent was actually the trigger man. That John Bull wasn't the one who shot him, but it was Daniel Kent. Um, but I think because John Boyle was stupid enough to advertise he was looking for him, they kind of just figured he was the man and that he did want revenge. So anyway, the Kent's there in California. All right, the Stewart brothers, they're down Birdsville Road, right on kind of towards the end, kind of down towards uh, Doden Road and all down there. That's where the Stewart's came from. Okay, now what did I tell you about the Hodges? This okay, the Hodges were the nephews of Mary Hodges, who was Tom's mother. All right, and I mentioned there were four relatives who were on the Confederate side, where he was on the Union side, and the four are Ben Watkins and the three Hodges is right here. And they were pretty much all cousins. Okay, I'll show you exactly where they lived in a minute. Uh, Mary, I found him on the map. I forgot where I found him. All right, the Brogdons, uh, it was the Beggs for him, it? Beg. Okay, most of you older and then the Brogdon, uh, wrote down. Uh, a lot of the old Davidsonville people know where the Beggs farm was, and if you don't know where that is, you might remember where they used to have the Rodown Hunt Cup things, all right, that was the Brogdon farm. They owned that. They were big slave owners. I just found that out a couple days ago. They had like 80 slaves on that farm. Okay, and this is where you, you know, um, you know this, uh, okay, where are we now? I'm not sure where Harvey was. Um, got two Hopkinses on the list. Neither one of them related to me. One of them was on, uh, um, what's that road up by you, Branch? Uh, Bell, Branch. Bell, Bell Branch. One of them lived on Bell Branch. The other one was on the Patuxent River Road. His father was either ran a grist mill or a sawmill on the Patuxent River. Uh, don't know much about comments. All right, now William Claggett was my hero. William Claggett lived on Patuxent River Road. Um, he went into the war. All right, um, Second Maryland Company C. He fought at Gettysburg. 
He got wounded at Cold Harbor a year later. He came home alive. As a matter of fact, he also surrendered with Robert E. Lee at Appomattox. He came home and he's buried down in our cemetery. He also married, and I guess it's hard to say this, he married into the Bassford family. On our wall up in the sanctuary, there's a C.C. Bassford up there where Elaine always sits. And C.C. Bassford is um, the father of his wife, Barry Bassford. Okay. Sam Anderson uh, actually wasn't from Davisonville, but his father had a store in Davisonville. Had a couple of them. One was on Rutland Road, and one was down by the Gunners Bridge. But Sam, he and his brother, uh, excuse me, uh, or I don't have any brother up here. All right, William and uh, Sam both were in Company C of the 2nd Battalion. Sam was wounded at Gettysburg, lived through the battle, but died two weeks later of gangrene down south somewhere. And they really don't know where he was buried down south. So his family has a memorial up in our cemetery. So we have his tombstone up in our cemetery. And the Anderson is Marvin Anderson. And uh, Mildred, that's their relatives. Okay, Ben Watkins belonged to that clan. Fulton, he lives over by the Hodges. Shepard, I'm not much on him. Magruder, he lives over by the Hodges. Levin Hardy really didn't go into the war. He was in the enrollment report that I showed you, but he was one of the ones that was scratched out. He had some kind of medical problem. But he was big in this church, and he's buried in our cemetery, and he also has a stained glass window up in the choir loft upstairs. Uh, he's on one side, a stained glass window, and his uh, wife, Georgiana, is on the other side. So they were big in the church. They were big in the old church. You know, they, they were in the first church. Okay, and these guys, this one I just picked up not long ago. Every time I look through that book I showed you, I find a new one from Davidsonville. Okay, now let's go. Okay, go ahead. Let me show you on the map where they live, especially the Hodges. Um, okay, here's the Kents. We we're already talked about where they lived. Here's the Watkins. All right, some Hodges live right where um, Hardy Bohu lived. Uh, then over here, you have like Middle Plantation, you know, probably about where the gods were, and uh, they go all the way over here. So all this area right here was Hodges. And look how many people who were on that list, this Confederate list. Magruder was on it. Um, Howard was on it. Um, uh, here's Levin Hardy down here. And there were three or four camp lines. And oh, four. He was on it. Uh, all of those boys lived here right there together. And probably a lot of them went together to war. They probably all went, you know, said, let's go to the war across the Potomac and, you know, join up. Uh, a lot of them, some of them, uh, join the 2nd Maryland Regiment. You know, they'd have a group of Marylanders who go, and they would sign up. Uh, okay, one more. Now, that's from 2nd District. This is the boys that are in 1st District. Uh, here are the Brogdons down here. The Stewarts are right in here, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, this is, this is Birdsville Road. Here we are right here. Davisville Post Office. Here's Central Avenue. Okay. Here's the stewards, and I found, uh, there's a variant. He's, he's the number one on the list. I found him this morning. Okay, now I want you to look at another name. This guy's not really from Davisonville, but his name is George Stewart. He's probably the best known Marylander from Anne Arundel County that fought in the Civil War. He was a brigadier general. And he owned 2,400 acres. And some of you old people may have heard people talking about the Stewart property. 
Remember people talking about distorted property, well that's distorted right there. And it went all the way to Central Avenue and all up Route 2, all where the golf course is, this is all by his channel Stewart. And I think he might be related to Stuart Pittman. Uh, and because they said that some of the Stuarts, and this Stuarts down here might have been the same family, they just spelled her name differently. Uh, but Stuart Pittman, if you notice, he spelled Stuart the way they did it by uh, S-T-E-U instead of S-T-E-W. So I think, you know, he may have gotten back from the family. Okay, but anyway, keep him in mind. He was one of the top generals in the Confederate Army and he lived just down the road from us. After the war, he came back and he farmed that. He wasn't born there, but he came back and farmed it. Okay, what do we got next? Uh, okay, go ahead and get it next. A few pictures. This is Daniel Kent, actually. Daniel Kent himself, I don't know if before or after he left to California. Next. Here the Anderson boy, Sam Anderson. His brother Richard went with him. They went to the second round and together along with William Clagg. Um, Sam again was wounded at Gettysburg, lived two weeks and died again in Green. Richard made it home, and I'll tell you about him in a minute, but I thought the next time anybody gets a portrait taken of themselves, bring your bull with along with you. It's gonna add a nice touch to it. Okay, next. All right, here's Richard. Uh, this is Sam's brother. This is before the war, All right, next. And after the war, he came home a cripple, but at least he came home. Um, okay, yeah, we're ready for that. Okay, yeah, one more. Yeah, uh, no, that's one more. One more. Get it in. Okay, now, I don't want anybody to say anything. I'm going to give you a little quiz. And I hope I don't give it away when I'm giving the quiz. All right, this is a Civil War monument. I want to know where it is, what state does it represent, and what does it symbolize where you got two soldiers helping each other off the battlefield? And raise your hand if you think you know. And I know you know, so I'm not going to ask you. <laughs> uh, anybody else that thinks they might have an idea? Where? Gettysburg. Gettysburg. Okay. This is a statue in Gettysburg. And what state does it represent? This ought to be easy because what are we talking about? Maryland. Maryland. All right. This is the Maryland statue at Gettysburg. And what does it symbolize? Brother against brother. All right, next one. Okay, so let me kind of explain each one of those. All right? Every state that fought in the Battle of Gettysburg has a monument in Gettysburg. And that's why there's so many monuments. How many people have been to Gettysburg Battlefield? Or was all of you have? All right, it, hundreds of monuments all over the place. And every state that had soldiers fight at Gettysburg has a monument, and this is the Maryland Monument. Maryland had about 3,000 men fight at Gettysburg. They're the only state that had soldiers on both sides. They had Union soldiers fighting at Gettysburg, and they had Confederate soldiers fighting at Gettysburg, the only state that had them. Um, let's go to the next one. Two regiments actually fought each other at Gettysburg. At the Battle of Colts Hill, and this shows the Second Maryland Confederates. At the Battle of Colts Hill, the, the battle was a three-day battle, but on the night of the second and the morning of the third, the first Maryland Union infantry was fighting against the second Maryland Confederate infantry on Colts Hill. The Confederates were pinned down 
uh, under breastworks and in ditches, and for some reason, a Major Johnson of the Brown Group, he decided to have a bayonet charge. And the four guys had to leave their trenches and breastworks and run up the hill to charge the Union uh, Maryland boys. There were also some other units up there, it wasn't just Maryland, but anyway, they called it the slaughter pit because they just got decimated going up there. Now, Brigadier General George Stewart, who owns that property I just talked about, remember George Stewart, he's in charge of the second barrel. He didn't order the charge, but he didn't stop it either. But anyway, they said after all these bodies were died off and everything, um, it is said that when he saw it, he was wringing his hands, had tears coming out of his eyes, and said, my poor boys, my poor boys. So, I mean, it just kind of sent them right into their, you know, slaughter pit. Okay, what do we got next? Uh, okay, what is that it? Nope, you've got seven more pictures. All right, which one? Uh, no, I'm not it. Go back. Okay. Okay, now we're going to go in something else. Something that really, I, I think, of all the things that I, I, we only got about two or three minutes left, and we'll take a break, so hold tight if you're getting antsy. Um, of all the things that I kind of fell onto or discovered or read about, what I want to talk about now is probably my most exciting moment of cap flying. Um, for most of my adult life, I figured there is no Civil War history in Maryland. The only thing you, I remember, I knew Antietam in Western Maryland, but besides that, I never heard of anybody mention the Civil War in Maryland especially this area, Anne Arundel County, Danapolis, Davisonville. There just was no Civil War history there, the way I thought. Then when I was 55, I happened to stumble on this Thomas Watkins story by accident. And if you want to stick around for part two, I'll tell you how I did that. Um, and then shortly after that, I found out we got two Confederates in our graveyards, and it looked like there's some Civil War history around here. And then I took a course from a community college on Annapolis in the Civil War and found all this stuff out about things that happened in Annapolis in the Civil War. And then I went over to the archives one day and I was looking for the 1850 census and I found the slave index in the back and it showed all these slaves that were in Anne Arundel County and around Davisonville. But I think the most exciting thing that I found was that I found that we had a brother against brother right here in Davisonville. Uh, I forgot something on the other thing, but I was going to let that slide. Right, anyway, we got a brother against brother right here in Davisonville. And so we had one of our family who had a Confederate son and a Union son right here in Davisonville. Um, all right, I think it's the next one. Okay, so who are who was the family? And again, you tend to read about brother and brother in, in books, you know, you go to Gettysburg and they got a book on brother against brother. And of course, I think nothing happened around here. And to come out find out, you know, we, we got things that other places have. Okay, in 1863, Joseph Hodges joined the Union Army. I said earlier that Tom was the only one at the beginning of the war, but in 63, halfway through the war, Joseph Hodges joined up. Joseph Hodges is the first cousin of Tom Watkins. He's the first cousin of Ben Watkins. He's the first cousin of Robert and Henry Hodges. And he is the brother of Charles Hodges. So right up the road here, 
we actually had, you know, brother against brother news and um, Okay, go to the next one. Now, I'm going to take credit for discovering this because I've never heard it before. But here's how I found it. I went over to the All Hallows Chapel graveyard, and I, in this monument, which is Joseph Hodges' monument, is about 20 yards from uh, Thomas Watkins' monument, gravestone, because they're all found. So they're all right there together. I didn't know anything about the Hodges. Well, I did. I knew the Charles Hodges. Charles was in the Confederate. And I happened to be walking by this, and I see Calvary, USA, and then with Civil War dates. And I said, wait a minute. There wasn't anybody else from here that went into the, you know, Union Army. So I got my sister-in-law, Liz, Next one. To look on uh, Ancestry.com and look up Joseph Hodges. And I come to find out here's the family right here. And there's Joseph. And then I look down and I say, Charles. You know, that name is familiar. So I said, well, that's the Charles. I got the Charles Hopkins on the Confederate group. So I said, so they're brothers, and then I had her look up, next one, I look up Charles today. And then I come over here, and there's a lot of stuff here, but, but I found out in 63, the father died of just natural death. He's like 60 some years old, um, 61 I guess. In 64, Joseph went into the army he died within a, la within a half a year, well, in less than a year, he was killed. He was in the Union Army, and then down here it says that this is Charles, and that he died or was killed in February of 65. So that poor mother lost her husband in 63, one son in 64, and another son in 65, and these two were all war related. So you can see the Civil War was just a horrible war. And you can imagine what a lot of people went through. Okay, we're all right next. Okay, one more. Okay, we're almost done. Here's the second Maryland. This is a, I think it might have been the only infantry. The second Maryland came from the first Maryland, and then after a year it became the second Maryland. And Five boys from Davisonville were in the second round. You got Richard, who was crippled, Sam, who died getting green, William, who buried him in our cemetery and lived, and um, um, with Robert E. Lee, and then Robert and, and Charles. We got that. Now, one thing I forgot to mention about the second round the second round was part of Robert E. Lee's uh, battalion. Uh, uh, Northern Virginia. They rode with Robert E. Lee. When Robert E. Lee surrendered at Appomattox on the 9th of April, 1865, there were probably in the 2nd Maryland, there were eight companies, this is Company C, there were eight companies, they all had to be 80 to 100 people in them, had probably 800 or some men total. There were 65 less when he surrendered. And William Flagg had put one up. That's pretty good. Uh, okay, now I'll leave that out there. One last thing and then I'm done for part one. That's some surprise visitors. <laughs> okay, everybody knows what that is, right? All right, this is the Gettysburg Maryland Monument. And I'm going to tell you how I got a hold of it quick. About six weeks ago, I went to Gettysburg to a Civil War auction, and this was being sold. And the auctioneer, nobody else in the audience knew what it was. And you can't blame me, though, it was in Gettysburg because you know, there are hundreds of 
monuments there. You can't expect to know what every monument is. So I was the only one who knew what it was. So the auctioneer says, who'll give me $100 to start the bid? And nobody raises their hand. I who give me fifty dollars, and nobody raises their hand. And then he says, "For Pete's sake, will anybody give me five dollars?" And I raise my hand, and I get. <laughs> so I got, and I got this gym for five dollars. Felt like I won the lottery. All right, but I got one problem. My wife is very anxious for me to donate this thing. <laughs> I keep it in the bedroom, and every time she goes in the bedroom, she thinks the money broke into the house. <laughs> now, this really is a once in a lifetime fine. I mean, I don't know if you ever find something like this again. Okay, now, we're almost ready for a break, and it's time to escape if you've had enough. The second part. It's only 15 minutes long, and again, that's going to be on how I found a story by accident and how my family was involved or connected to it. Not much, but it was the family's connection. So we'll take a break. You can, if you're going to stay, get something else to eat, go to the bathroom, you can ask me questions, get a cup of coffee, and those of you who need to leave, feel free to do so, and uh, we'll be good with that. Okay.